Good morning. You're listening to FourDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. I'm in Fort Lauderdale at the Starnet Spring Meeting, and I'm with Randy Weiss, who's president and owner of R.D. Weiss. Randy, how you doing? Kemp, I'm great. I'm just glad to be in warm weather after months of snow and ice and freezing to death. Yeah, that's right. It is nice down here. It's windy. We've got a little front here, but it's much better than what a lot of people are seeing around the country. You have an event May 1st. I want to talk to you about that. We'll get to that in just a minute. But for the benefit of our listeners to run through who R.D. Weiss is, you're based in Port Chester, New York. You have, I believe, six locations in the Northeast area. You're a commercial contractor. You focus in installing flooring, but you also have a maintenance business. I think the last time we talked, you said it was about two-thirds commercial contracting and about one-third maintenance. And interestingly enough, you spent the first half of your career, similarly to me, in the corporate world, then you got the entrepreneurial itch, and your business has been doing very well. Did I get that right? Pretty much, Kemp. We've come through some tough times between '09 and and '11. Strangely enough, last year was our best year ever as a company. And you're correct. My background was, at this point, 50% corporate and 50% an entrepreneur. I think the good news since we last spoke is that our services business, which, which includes maintenance, has grown to probably half of our business. So we're thrilled to be growing that side of our business at the rate we are. You say best year. That's fantastic. You're in that greater New York area. I think your furthest west location is in Detroit. When you start looking at where you're getting business now and you look at the vertical sectors, tell us where you're seeing business. I think for us, the majority of our growth in the last couple of years has been in the healthcare arena and education, both sectors that, frankly, we had somewhat ignored. We were very mired in the corporate sector, never really played a lot in the hospitality arena. But once we went to market with some new products that we felt led us into the healthcare and education sectors, we really started seeing a lot of new growth. You know, I interviewed you four years ago. You were at that time chairman of Starnet. And we talked about coming out of this recession. You were talking about the new normal, how life after the recession was affecting the role of the contractor. Give us an update on how different the world is today versus 2007. Well, I think what the recession taught us is that uh, many of us had been spoiled with growth for the sake of growth. Uh, We sort of rode a growing economy for many years. We added people. We banked on the future. And we thought there was probably no end to the business conditions. Uh, Many of us who are homeowners, felt the same way about our our homes. We felt it was a constantly appreciating asset, and uh, the recession taught us some lessons around that. I think everyone adjusted their business models, whether it was headcount or reduction in facilities or, in some cases, just getting more focused on a segment of their business where they perform well as opposed to trying to do everything well. I think there were important lessons learned, and I think we'll be very, very slow if ever, to go back to those old ways. Well, and also, I mean, if I could point out a comment you made a minute ago, is I believe your ratio of PI business, I think most people understand that meaning the product installation business versus the service side of the business, you just were telling us that your business is evolving more to the service side. And I think we're seeing that trend with a lot of folks, right? I think we are. Our segment that we've always done the best in has been replacement and remodeling as opposed to a new construction I think there are those StarNet members that are better suited for that than we are. But absolutely, we see services as a very big key to our future. All right, so you do have an event May 1st. Tell us what's happening in New York on May 1st. Well, May 1st, Kemp, we've just relocated to a new office facility in Manhattan. The building of it was caused by a lease expiration, but it gave us an opportunity to create kind of an office of the future. Internally, we talk a lot about the new millennia worker and the Gen Xs, et cetera. I happen to be a baby boomer, so I see all of this as critical to our having a sustainable business in the future. So we decided to bring in an outside expert to help us design an office that would be somewhat without walls and where there was no status associated with where one sat. In fact, personally, I don't have an office. I sit at an open desk like every other associate. So we're tearing down not just physical walls, but we're tearing down some barriers and objects that you know many of us 
grew up with in our careers. So it's kind of cool. We're trying to let people know that we're looking ahead at the future, and uh, I, and I feel it's going to be important to attracting the kind of worker I'm going to need for the next 5, 10, 15 years. You know, I find this very interesting. It's really one of the reasons I want to do this interview is because there's a lot of talk around this. I mean, we went from walled offices, then, you know, thanks to lead and the natural light and things, we started taking the walls down, and then we went to panels, and then we started taking the panels down. And now we talk to people that are very progressive Generally, in big cities like New York, you're seeing offices where you have these little pods, and I guess that's what you're telling me, is that you're going to have a little coffee break area, and that's where a lot of people are going to meet. Is that what you're telling me? That's right, and that's what we want. You know, We want to build a culture around collaboration. You mentioned cubicles. I found it interesting last year at Neocon. I don't think of any of the major manufacturers. They were showing cubicles. They were showing pods. They were showing new ways to set up offices. And that rang a strong bell with me that the big guys are getting out of the cubicle businesses. You know, we want to be on the front of a lot of trends, and certainly we feel this trend is is very important to our culture and our workforce, so we're very excited about it. Now, what happens when you want to talk about financial matters or give employee reviews? I mean, those are the kind of things that need to be done in privacy. Will there be areas in your new location for that? We've built two 10 by 10 break rooms. One has a small uh, conference table and the other one has a couch and a couple of chairs and it's referred to as our Mad Men office. It is a little bit of a throwback. You know, you would be surprised that the number of real confidential conversations you need to have in a day, there are a lot fewer than you think. I'm not in those two private rooms very often myself. I try in the spirit of transparency and openness to hold as few meetings behind closed doors as I can. Randy, this conversation of millenniums and and working with these generations that behave differently, tell me, based on your experience, we had a conversation yesterday, you've you've been hiring some people, talk about how the millenniums are different than, say, you and I were in the workforce. Well, you know, Kim, coming from a baby boomer, my answer is probably going to be a little bit strange. You know, some of the characteristics of the millennium worker is that they want less structure, meaning they don't want to necessarily have to be at work at 8 a.m. and punch out at 5. They want to be free to wear what they want to wear. And they want to focus really on results more than the process. And I think baby boomer generation, you know, we grew up with rule books and policy manuals and all this, and that's just kind of white noise to uh, this generation. They're not going to adapt, I think, to us, and we're going to have to adapt a little more to them I know last night when we were speaking, I mentioned a woman who called about a job. It wasn't a job we had open. It was a job that I knew about. And she said, well, tell me this. Is this organization more like IBM or are they more like Google? And I think if we try and hold on to, you know, 1960 and 1970 ideas and principles about how a business is run, we're not going to attract the worker of the future. We're, we're going to have to change and we're going to have to be accommodating to the needs of the new worker. You said you got some help in designing your new locations. Do you want to tell us who you got involved to help you lay this out? Sure. We got a good friend and a very capable designer by the name of Mike Stark, who's done some great work over 20 years in New York City. Mike was really the person that did our layout for us. He, he brought the entire concept to us. I feel that your history is as important as your future. And he merged in this office design things from our past, such as vacuum cleaners that go back to the early 1900s, which are wall art, to, you know, the newest and latest in flat screen TV technology and lighting and other office furniture. All right. Well, we look forward to being at that event. And congratulations on your continued growth. So, again, we've been talking to Randy Weiss, the first day of the Starnet annual meeting in Fort Lauderdale, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloridaLA.net.